Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Google has teased the upcoming Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. Not a full announcement, just a tease of what we can expect to see in the autumn, probably around October time. But for us here on the Gary Explains channel, the most important thing is it's talked about the SOC, the system on a chip that will be inside and we now know that it is a Google designed processor. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. <music> Okay, let's very quickly just talk about the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro. Obviously these are Pixel devices, Android direct from Google, lots of quick updates, lots of uh, direct integration between Google services and what you get inside of the Pixel 6. Comes in two flavors, Pixel 6, Pixel 6 Pro, variety of colors, main difference between the two size, 6.4 inch for the smaller one, 6.7 inch for the bigger one. Uh, 90 hertz display for the small one, 120 hertz display for the bigger one. Probably some differences in RAM and storage configurations. The bigger one's also got an extra telephoto camera. So just like there is for these other devices that have launched with a pro version or a plus version or a, or a whatever, two models, you choose which one you want. But most interestingly for us here is that Google has confirmed that the system on a chip, the SOC inside of the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro will be its own uh, processor called the Google Tensor. And it's taken that word, of course, from the whole domain of machine learning. It's already got a Tensor processing unit, a TPU, okay? And you've got uh, frameworks for software, things called like TensorFlow. And so here we have now the Tensor processor. Personally, I think it's a bad idea to kind of call the processor the same as a name that you kind of already get in the machine learning domain. I understand why they're doing it because the main focus of this processor is machine learning. However, I think that will be too much of a confusion for people with Tensor, TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite, Tensor Processing Unit, Tensor, so it's all the same word and it, I think it's a, they shouldn't have done that. But there you go, I'm not working for the marketing department. So what is the Google Tensor SOC? An SOC, which is a system on a chip, is exactly what it says. It's a system, which means there's lots of different components on a single chip. So you don't need to have individual chips on the motherboard or even connected via you know expansion cards or whatever. They're all built into the same chip. So what do you normally get in a system on a chip? Well, you get a CPU, you get a GPU, and then you're gonna get some kind of image processing for the camera. You're gonna get video codecs for encoding and decoding. Of course, you've got other things like access to uh, the systems you need for accessing the RAM, accessing the storage, things like that. And of course, you're gonna get security chips and you're gonna get some kind of machine learning thing. And this last point, this machine learning technology is something that's been added more and more to processes in the last few years and is now really the norm. Every system on a chip has to have some kind of a machine learning processing unit inside of it. And it's that machine learning aspect that Google are making the hot ticket item for the Google Tensor, as I said, even because of its name. So they say, don't worry about the CPU, don't worry about the GPU, let's just talk about the machine learning capabilities. And the selling point they're saying is, all the stuff they've learned doing Google Assistant, doing all the natural conversation stuff, doing all the stuff with voice, doing all the stylized photos and facial recognition inside of Google Photos, all the stuff that it does that is machine learning based, a lot of it now can be run more locally because they've got a processor in the device that can handle that without having to send it up to the cloud and then wait for a response to come back. Now the question is, is that something wow? Well, it is in one sense in terms of the technology, all this machine learning stuff is really wow. I mean, I remember, you know, years ago trying to dictate a message just to a, a PC with a headset, you know, and some software running, and it was rubbish. Now, of course, you can pick up your smartphone, you can talk to your smart speaker, and nine times out of 10, it understands exactly what you said, it gives you the result that you want, and it's absolutely fantastic. This really is futuristic technology. However, is it enough for a processor to be called the Google Tensor to make us go, wow, this is what I want in my smartphone. And the problem is I'm not that convinced. And the reason I have my doubts is that while ML machine learning is fundamental, it really is revolutionary, it's not actually the core thing that drives my user experience on a smartphone. So of course, as I said, there are things like the CPU and there are things like the GPU, and we'll talk more about those in a moment. So what's happening here is that Google has designed its own system on a chip. Now what that means, it's taken different components from different places and it's making its own silicon. It hasn't designed its own CPU. It hasn't designed its own GPU. 
what it has done is taken that machine learning component and said, we'll design that. And then it's combining it probably with a uh, Cortex processor from ARM, we'll talk more about that in a moment, a Mali GPU, and then it's putting it onto the system on a chip and saying, right now, combined with our TPU, with our, our processing unit for machine learning, this will be great. Now, of course, when you're talking about video, photo, voice, having those capabilities on the device is gonna be great. Absolutely great. So the fact that you can do video and then you can do real-time processing uh, for uh, machine learning algorithms, you can do voice recognition, you can do transcribing, all this stuff is absolutely great. But of course, other devices already do this as well. You'll find similar things on the Qualcomm platform. They have their AI engine. Of course, Apple have got their neural engine. So this is not something new that we say, wow, the Pixel 6 is the only device to do these things. Other devices do them too. That means to stand up above the crowd, the Pixel 6 now has to do those things in an extraordinary way better than the competition. It's not just good enough when you come to machine learning just to say it does it a bit better. It's a bit faster. It's a bit more accurate. It's a bit more convenient. That's nice, but that won't make me say, oh great, I'm gonna buy this phone because it's a bit more. It's gotta be leaps of bounds above. Otherwise, other factors come into play, which is things like the CPU, the GPU, the amount of storage, the amount of RAM, the pricing, all these factors come into play when you're thinking about buying a device. And I don't think anybody on the planet says, oh, I'm gonna buy that device because it does better machine learning. That isn't gonna happen. So let's talk about the CPU. So the CPU is gonna be an ARM-based CPU, of course. And so if Google are not designing their own CPU, then there's only one other place really to go, and that is to ARM itself, which means it's gonna be a Cortex uh, CPU. Basically, the standard across the industry is octa-core, eight processors, and in the past, that would be four power efficiency cores, four uh, high performance cores. Nowadays, that might be a three uh, cluster setup. So you might have one or two cores clocked at a higher clock frequency, then some middle cores clocked at a lower clock frequency, and then the power efficiency cores. There are lots of rumors around the uh, White Chapel, as it used to be called before they named it officially the Google Tensor. And basically, it's gonna be a Cortex-A78 system because it's too early, because this is coming out in October, too early to be a Cortex-A710. So we're looking at a Cortex-A78. Now, whether it's gonna be two Cortex-A78 at high clock speeds and then two Cortex-A78 at lower clock speeds, or those middle cores are gonna be something like a Cortex-A76 and then four uh, Cortex-A55 cores. We don't know the details yet. Google are not talking about that. And the reason why Google aren't really talking about the specifics of the CPU, of course, is because it's not that impressive. The Cortex-A78, of course, is a great processor, absolutely fantastic, but it's gonna be behind because already at the end of the year, we're gonna have the next Apple processor announced, the next Apple device. And then only a few months after that, we're gonna have the next Qualcomm chip announced. And then all the phones from Samsung and OnePlus and Sony and all that are all gonna come out with that new processor. So this is already gonna be one year behind and yet it came out uh, in October. And then secondly, because Google don't have access to the uh, Cortex-X program, so that's the Cortex-X1, the Cortex-X2, which we're expecting to see in the devices in the early part of next year, they're already one lower behind as well. So they're more kind of in the MediaTek range, the MediaTek Dimensity 1200, for example, much kind of down there. I mean, even the Exynos has the X1 processor in it from Samsung, so they're even behind Samsung. So it's gonna be Qualcomm, it's gonna be uh, Samsung, and then it's gonna be either MediaTek or Google in, in terms of raw CPU performance. So it's not that impressive. And it'll be the same story with the GPU, of course. Uh, Qualcomm have got their own GPU, that's the Adreno, and they don't sell that to anybody else. Apple, of course, has got its GPU that it's kind of done with imagination tech over the years, and we won't get into all that stuff now about the cross-licensing and so on. And then, of course, you've got, uh, then you've got the Mali GPU, and the Mali GPU is what you get inside of the Exynos at the moment, but even Exynos are saying they're gonna move over to the AMD uh, GPU, a new entrant into the market. I've got a whole video about that here on this channel. Do check it out. So the question is, they're left now with the Mali, which is kind of again, kind of like the MediaTek uh, 1200 kind of thing. Now the Mali is a good GPU, but it's not the fastest GPU. It isn't the best GPU in the market. And if the AMD delivers on its promises, then it could be the third position GPU in the market. So CPU and GPU are decidedly mid-range. So Google said, well, we can't talk about the CPU being brilliant. We can't talk about the GPU being brilliant. I know what we'll do. We'll talk about the 
processor unit, the TPU, the, the machine learning stuff. And then we'll even call it the Google Tensor and kind of like waving your hands, do some distraction. Look over here, look over here, because don't look over here, because this isn't the stuff that you really want. Look over there, look over there. So they're announcing now, several months before the official launch, and they're saying, look over here at the uh, Tensor, the Tensor, the machine learning, look at it, it's brilliant. Uh, because they don't want you to look at the other stuff over here. And of course, if you're a gamer, if you want fast uh, web page rendering, then of course that single core performance, that multi-core performance is going to be important. The GPU is going to be important. And being able to do that stuff with video or with photos is brilliant. But is that enough to convince you to accept a lower speed? Because we mustn't forget, it's not always about performance. There are millions and millions of phones that are sold using the Qualcomm 700 series and the 600 series mid-range devices and even low-end devices because people don't have the financial resources to uh, buy a flagship device all the time. So they opt for good mid-range devices, just depending on their financial circumstances. Of course, that means that the Pixel will go head to head with those devices uh, very easily. But of course, it depends on the price. If this is a $400 phone, Pixel 6 $400, well, fantastic. It will sell, you know, millions of them. But if it's a $1,000 phone, so it's going head to head with the iPhone and with the S21, S22, uh, when it comes out, then of course, it's like, well, it doesn't have the performance. Uh, maybe it doesn't have the memory, doesn't have the internal storage. I don't know. It's got this tensor thing. Okay, is that really what I need? Do you understand the marketing problem here? That ML doesn't sell. ML is not something that you sell. It's just something that we're going to get used to and it's going to be an expected feature that of course it can do bokeh in the background. Well, we expect that. Everyone does that. iPhone does that. The Samsung do that with the Qualcomm. Everyone does that. Why are you making such a big fuss about it? That is the key thing. And the final thing to talk about is the modem. We don't know who's going to make the modem. When I say modem, we're talking 3G, 4G, 5G, CDMA in uh, North America. And of course, Qualcomm are the leading manufacturer of modems. There are other modems out there. Uh, and of course, Qualcomm found their way into the Samsung Galaxy devices for North America because there's a CDMA compatibility. Uh, other devices sell kind of in Europe and in Asia and in Africa because they don't have to have that CDMA. So are Google going for a Qualcomm modem with everything in it? Or is it saying, no, no more CDMA. This is just going to be 4G, 5G, maybe only for, who knows? I mean, we don't know who makes the modem, but I'm pretty sure it's not Google itself. So it's going to be another part that they're sticking onto the phone and probably an external modem, I guess. Who knows? Who knows how that's going to be? And then, of course, battery life. We don't know how big the batteries are going to be. And we don't know what kind of battery life we're going to get. OK, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this look at the Google Whitechapel SOC, Google Tensor, as it's now called. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I uh, hope you're following me on Twitter at Gary Explains. Don't forget my newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com. Type in your email address. No spam, just the newsletter. OK, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.